and take a look at. This is not about trading zero DT options. This is just about shorter duration trades versus longer duration trades. We're just going to point out some of the, I guess, you know, some of the fundamental differences between the two. So, I mean, you know where we're going with this. Yes. Basically, if you shorten the duration, you can make more money, but you're going to take more risk. Yeah. Those two will never be divorced. That's right. Risk and reward will never separate. If if you the way you can think about this, I think, is a pretty if you flat if you just thought about like like something flatlined over time, you could you could linear, just think about something linear. You put on a trade, you have X amount of risk. The longer that you have, it's it's you just get to spread that risk out for a longer period of time. That's really all it is. But the risk never changes. The risk never changes, right? Right. It's just it's just the same risk over a longer period of time. Right. That's and all. And if is. you contract the duration, you increase the per day risk. That's right. Let's take a look. So, in conjunction with our recent with our recent zero DTE options research, by the way, we're claiming credit for the word zero. I mean DTE, because on this network we started that. Just so you, if you remember, yeah. What yeah. else was it before? Nothing. Days to, well, people would say, days how many six, days to days expiration? Expired. But yeah, DTE. Yeah, yeah we well, started that's DTE. That's our little acronym. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, everybody in the industry uses it, just to be fair. But uh, we will stinkers. Yeah, we didn't even trademark it. We will be incorporating shorter duration studies that aim to compare the trade-offs with trading 45, day, 45 DT options. Since we know markets are efficient across liquid underlyings, we know that one trade is not inherently better or worse than another. So today we're going to look at selling premium across different durations between 7 and 45 days. Let's take a look. So since 2005, we're looking at SPY. We sold strangles of 25 delta short puts and calls. We managed all the trades at expiration. Compared 45, 21, 14, and 7. Obviously, if you manage earlier, everything's going to be better as far as tail risk goes. Mm -hmm. We know that. But we needed to get as much data as we could in this one. We recorded the win rates, the average credit received, the median P, median PL, the largest loss, and the likelihood of a greater than three times likelihood of a loss greater than three times the credit received. Okay, so you sell something at a buck, you pay four. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's go to the next slide. Notice we are computing median PLs in this study as opposed to our usual average PL. Looking at the median as a way to, me to measure the middle of something without the effect of outliers. We want to compare the effect of shorter days to expiration on PL with outliers that were specific to without outliers that were specific to certain durations. Next slide. All right, here we go, TP. Into mm -hmm. the meat. The median PL for the seven DTE strangles was twice that of the 45 days. The largest loss for the 7 DT was 37% of the magnitude of the 45 days in just 16% of the time. Break it down. So if you look at the last two lines here, median P&L per day, $4.80 was the average daily P&L for the 45 day one, and it increases the shorter amount of time I do it. So it goes from 480 to 621, so that's what about maybe 35% higher. Again, 35% higher, 35% higher. So you get going from 45 to seven days over twice as much median P&L per day. So in other words, the same number of winners um, same number of losers on either side of that P&L is what the median would be. The largest loss is less than half. What does it say? 37% um, in just 16% of the time. So what I'm doing with trading these seven days is dramatically increasing my median P&L per day. Not the fact that I'm going to make money trading these seven-day options all the time. That's not what it's saying. But the median is higher. The largest loss, though, for 16%, in other words, here's, here's the way I interpret the 2700 versus 7500. The seven days doesn't have, in other words, it's not 16% of the risk, it's a little less than half percent. It's about a 
forty percent of the risk. The seven day options have about forty percent of the risk of the forty five day option, but they only are traded. They only have sixteen percent of the time that the forty five days do. So that means, in other words, when we think about, it, remember that thing, you know, you know, multiply vol by the square root of two. You know, if making you blah blah blah. So as time increases, our risk increases. What this is telling me is that these seven day options have about two times. The expected risk, their their actual risk is about two times the expected risk of the 45 days. Because if you looked at this just on paper, you would say, well, I make twice as much money and I lose one third as much. That's but right. You have, to, you have to multiply the numbers. It's it's actually, it's not, you know, you lose a, you lose a, a third, but it's it's actually, uh, there's, there's five different It should different be seats. one sixth. Yeah, it should be one sixth. Right. That's the fifth. point. Right. That's the 16%. Yeah. But, um... Anyway. But it's a trade-off. Yeah, but if I looked at this, I don't hate it. Let's go to the next slide. No. Yeah. So, although the average PL and the credit per day are higher for the shorter duration trades, we saw large losses roughly 50 to 100% more often than the longer duration trades. So this is where it normalizes everything, okay? So you can see the average credit received per day on the top line, which is still super rich, and then the median PL per day, but then we get down to the to the real trouble spot, which is the likelihood of a loss greater than three times the credit received. And that's where it starts to get, you know, a little more challenging. So let me explain why this happens a little bit. Okay. That on X, and I, we can argue about this, but on any given day, the, a stock or the spiders are going to do what they're going to do. It mm -hmm. really doesn't care whether it's 45 days before expiration or expiration. It doesn't care. Okay, so it's going to move a little or move a lot. The seven day options have a much smaller overall premium than the 45 days. So having a 3x loss on that small premium requires only a smaller move in the SPY. So the SPY having, let's say, a normal daily move can create a 3x loss on that seven-day option, where it's only a 2.6% or only a th never gets to a, rarely gets to a 3x loss on a 45-day option because you're selling those 45-day options so rich, the spider doesn't move enough to increase the option premiums to get to that point. And Seven days, it's a lot easier. And, and one of the things it's we should twice point, as easy. And one of the things we should point out is, we trade lots of underlyings that that are not spiders. Yes. And these have a lot lower volatility and a lot less risk. So these numbers magnify tremendously. Yes. You're, with different underlyings. And pin risk does exist. I think it exists. If you go back to slide. One John for a second. I think there's something really important to take away from here before we go to takeaways. Um, uh, since we know markets are efficient across liquid underlyings, and this is very liquid underlying, we know that one trade is not inherently better or worse than another. And so, one of the reasons we wanted to do the studies to show you hey, there's 45 days is not necessarily better. It's, it's, more, it's more optimal if you're talking about an opportunity to do more stuff with it, like mm -hmm. manage early, like mm -hmm. adjust, like reduce tail risk. Like we didn't do the managing early part to this, which we will do, but it's managing early, it's, it's adjusting tail risk, it's tweaking the positions, it's tweaking the delta, it's taking advantage of that high volatility over a longer period of time. So there's a lot of things there. Go to the last slide to takeaways, slide six. So the key trade-offs between shorter and longer-term um, days to expiration trades come down to larger P&L swings in the shorter duration trades. Shorter duration trades tend to have larger P&Ls, but they also have larger losses more often than the 45-day trades. And then the longer days to expiration trades are less risky, are the less risky option, all else equal, because the same risk is spread out over longer periods of time. That's what I talked about at first. As what you were saying is the 45-day options give you a lot of, lot of flexibility. 
shorter term options tend to be more binary. You know, they're not binary options, but they're either winners or losers at expiration. There's no, you know, they, they still retain value even as they approach expiration. So to capture even 50% of the value of a seven day option, for example, you're taking it pretty close to expiration. So they tend to be more binary, either all winner, all loser. That's, where, that's the way I think about them. Good stuff, Mr. Preston. We'll take a short break. We'll come on back with uh, Scott Sheridan. Yay. Do, 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 do. 